Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I wanted to go ahead and go over the update that launched, well, that dropped like I think a day ago, uh, which is the Path of Exile War for the Atlas, uh, which is covering basically the new league that's coming out, which is the Abyss League. Uh, and there's actually a trailer, so before I talk about anything, we're going to go ahead and watch this trailer. I'm going to hide myself because I don't want to block the HP bar. I am Eldo Kaisarius, Chief Archon of the Oriad Academy. I write in a fevered state, terrified by what I have become. So there are... Quite a few new skills coming out in this expansion, uh, along with some new support gems. I have gazed upon things not meant for the eyes of man. Spores of malignant madness that must be stopped. None of us are safe. An elder and indescribable evil, shrieking with immemorial lunacy. And there's also a bunch of new maps and bosses. Dude, that looks so cool. Jaws. I hear its cry echoing through my blistered mind. The Elder stands knocking at the threshold. And I believe that's Hydra who's being taken over. This is like a Craigasm screen right here. I would I would pause and go back and look at some of those. <laughs> So that's going to be coming after the Turmoil League, well, after Mayhem League, because Mayhem's after Turmoil, uh, which is going to be the new expansion that we're getting, which is pretty, pretty damn awesome. So I'm super excited for that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go over this page here that you can find on pathofexile.com if you guys are curious. And um, yeah, so let's go ahead and start. So War for the Atlas, which is what we saw on the actual Atlas um, right here. Uh, is essentially when the two different types of, well, there's the Elder and then the Shapers Control, and you can see this here. It's kind of like, um, well, fuck, we'll just go into it. Here we go. <laughs> this will explain it. You will encounter maps that are marked with this border. While playing in these areas, you'll discover that a being with this border. While playing in these areas, you'll discover that a being called... This is really quiet for some reason. ...draining power oh, from the Shapers kidding. Creations. The Shaper will attempt to contain the Elder's spread by taking control of maps himself to block the Elder. Maps controlled by the Shaper show the damage that the War for the Atlas is causing on the fabric of reality. Each map you play advances the War and lets you push back the Shaper or the Elder to influence who is winning. Should the Elder become powerful enough, he will be able to manifest in maps and drain the life from the map boss to create an Elder Guardian. The level of the consumed boss dictates the difficulty and reward of the Elder Guardian. Defeat these four guardians to face the elder himself. So that is essentially our new expansion, which sounds really, really cool because I'm a huge fan of how the Atlas works. And the biggest thing that I wanted to talk about um, with this expansion is that people are always asking about an endgame, and you know, like, you know. 24-7, like, Endgame is always the number one thing talked about. But this gives players a choice. You can either choose to go the route of, like, the Shaper, or you can go ahead and go the route of the Elder, uh, and that will influence your Guardians along with your your uh, Endgame boss, which is pretty cool. I also think my webcam's fucked on the F... 
yeah, my webcam is like destroyed because it's like retarded for some reason. Uh, let's see, 32 new maps. So the Atlas has been redrawn. Actually, let's go over these really fast. So this is one of the new skills coming out here, which is like this little uh, volcanic geyser stuff. Um, and I think this is showing the boss. So I don't know which one is the, I think this is the boss here. Um, this one looks like a poison. I don't know what this is. It almost looks like this guy's throwing a javelin, but it's not. I think he's dual wielding. And I think there's a temporary buff that happens while you're in this area. So like this is a buff that he's gaining uh, of some type. And then these are the debuffs. So I guess some of these have mechanics to them as well because they don't want you to like get bursted down or something. I'm not really too sure, but that's pretty interesting to think about. Some more mechanical fights. Uh, this guy automatically scares me because this looks like the gate from like Minotaur that you fight that like slows you by a bunch, but I don't really know what's happening here. Oh, okay. And then there are 32 new maps. The Atlas has been redrawn. Find your way to the center through the new paths and discover the new challenges along the way. Uh, War for the Atlas adds 32 new uh, new maps to Path of Exile's ever-evolving endgame. Uh, so this is one that I believe requires you to have a mobility skill to jump between. So uh, no more uh, lazy men auto-walk everywhere builds. Uh, I believe this is showing not only... A new tile set but also one of the new support gems that it, we're going to be covering this looks like either a comb or katava area which katava in a map sounds terrifying uh this is showing one of the new bosses oh i didn't even know that what the hell that's like that's pretty spooky um this is another new area okay this is like a torah themed and then this is I don't know what this... I'm, is that a boss? No, no, this is just him using this skill, I think. Okay, shaped and elder items. So before I jump into this one, I want to see if I can fix this really fast. Let me disable this. And uncheck, uncheck. Apply. Okay. Okay, I think the webcam should be fixed now. Sort of, kind of. All right, so shaped and elder items. So this right here is like one of the meaty things in this expansion. Um, so as you fight in maps, the shaper or elder control, which is what we kind of saw in the video previously, you may find rare uh, shaped and elder items which can be crafted to have powerful properties that do not normally occur. So as an example on these boots, we have the unaffected by shocked ground. Um, that rolls on them, which you cannot normally find. Uh, on this sword is a better example. There's like socketed gems are supported by level 20 chance to bleed. Socketed gems are supported by level 20 ruthless. Socketed gems are supported by level 18 melee splash. Uh, and then you have your actual, like you have your IPD roll, uh, which is 129% physical. And then you have 4 to 9 flat fizz, 12% um, AOE, 15% chance to cause bleeding on hit, and reduce enemy stun threshold. Now, I believe these stats are rolled as hybrid, so I want to say that the melee splash rolled with the increased AOE, and I don't know if, like, the chance to bleed rolled with the flat fizz and ruthless rolled with the fizz. I don't know exactly how that works, but I believe some of these stats are hybrid rolls, uh, which leads me to believe you could scour Alk and actually, like, legitimately craft them. Uh, this would be a chess piece here, uh, which gives plus one to level of socketed active skill gems. And the other unique effect on it is percentage increased intelligence. Uh, intelligence gives you flat energy shield based on your intelligence. So this actually kind of adds a another layer of defense on top of that, which is very rare Like to see that they're going to allow us to kind of bring back some more intel stacking. That's very good. But that plus one is socketed active skill gems too. Uh, these gloves have, let's see, level 20 slower proj, uh, level 18 faster casting. You can see the faster casting, I believe, rolled with the cast speed as a hybrid. And the level 20 slower projectiles rolled with the level, or uh, with the 23% projectile damage. And then a helmet here, which is plus one to level of socketed minion gems. Um, 
What else do we have here? Socket of Gems are supported by level 18 Remote Mine. The 18 Remote Mine pairs with the Place an Additional Mine, which is actually ridiculous. Um, Socket of Gems are supported by level 18 Hypothermia. 16% um, increased effective chill, so those go together. And then there's the 5 to 89 Lightning Damage to Spells, which is interesting to find on a helmet. I don't know what that rolled with, if that's maybe just by itself. So, there's 10 new gems. This expansion introduces 10 new gems, including 4 new skill gems and 6 new supports. The new skills have a focus on necromancy, while the support gems are designed to augment as many skills as possible in new and interesting ways. So, there's Unearth, which fires a projectile that will pierce through enemies to impact the ground at the targeted location, creating a bone arch archer corpse where it lands. Uh, projectiles pierce all targets, maximum of seven corpses allowed. So I think this is your alternative to having to use Desecrate. They're trying to, giving you some other ways of flexibility instead of everyone, you know, generating corpses the same exact way. I don't know what this Bone Archer is, though. I wonder if you could, like, use Bone Archers as actual skeletons, like, as specters, and they would do something. I'm pretty curious to see how that works. Uh, Body Swap. This is one that I really liked. Your body explodes, dealing spell damage in an area around you, and a targeted corpse also explodes, dealing damage around it. Your body is recreated at the location of the corpse. The explosion of the corpse is not affected by modifiers to spell damage. The spell cannot be repeated. Uh, so it has a flat amount of fire, along with explosion deals base fire damage equal to 3% of your maximum life, and explosion deals base fire damage equal to 3% of the corpse's maximum life. You know what I'm seeing when I see this body swap? It's a little bit of an RF meta, boys. Uh, volatile dead. Let's see. But this sounds really interesting as, like, maybe, like, a, a secondary source of a mobility scale, like being able to body swap across. Volatile dead. Corpses near the target location explode, dealing damage in a small area and creating an orb which moves towards nearby enemies before dealing spell damage in a larger area. Um, so this this is literally like you can create volatiles. <laughs> that's pretty that's pretty troll. Uh, cremation. A targeted corpse explodes, dealing area damage and turning into a volcanic geyser, which you can see on the right here. Uh, which will repeatedly unleash projectiles sequentially over the surrounding area for a duration. The explosion of the corpse is not affected by modifiers to spell damage. Dude, like, Firestorm cremation builds? Scaling duration? That sounds really, really mad. I'm not gonna lie. That sounds really fun. And you could use, for example, Unearth to, like, properly position your cremation, maybe? I don't really know. Uh, but this is physical, so I'm not really sure how that would work. Storm Barrier Support supports any channeling skill protecting you from damage while you channel it. 50% chance to gain a power charge when hit while channeling supported skills. So one big thing to note is that this gem requires level 4, which means you can use it right away. So this already I, I kind of really like because it gives you a source of power charge sustain, which you do not have at all low level. Uh, and it's it's okay if you get hit by mobs low level as well, like it's no problem. 8% less physical and lightning damage taken from hits while channeling supported skills. So it doesn't work against degens, so like Corrupted Blood, um, I don't believe would, would do anything with that. However, it's really nice to see though, because on boss hits, like big meaty boss hits, this will actually do a really good job at mitigating. So just by simply running Arctic Armor and using this Storm Barrier support and then relying on like your flasks as well, you can make a pretty, a pretty I don't want to say tanky character, but you could definitely take up or soak up some physical hits, which is very important in this game. So I really like Storm Barrier support right now. The question is, is you need to make sure you have enough damage to be able to support this. Uh, volley support. Now this is this was actually shown in one of those uh, I don't know what skill he was using but it looked like split arrow where it was shooting them like parallel. Uh, support skills that fire projectiles from the user does not affect projectiles fired from other locations as secondary effects. I believe this is for something like tornado shot. You shoot the tornado shot and then it creates the little hole and then it shoots more arrows. I don't believe this would work for the secondary effect. Uh, so this is kind of interesting. Another gem that's required at level 4 and does give you two additional projectiles. 
uh, which opens up a lot of opportunities. So that's pretty interesting. This is a 140% mana multiplier though, but it could be used in place in place of like LMP. Uh, spell Cascade, supported spell skills that apply an effect to an area around, supports spell skills that apply an effect to an area around a target location. Supported skills have less area of effect and deal a shit ton less damage, but supported area of effect skills, uh, supported, Area of effect skills also affect areas in front and behind the target. So if you hit a target, it creates and it basically creates the same exact skill in front and behind, which is interesting because if you AOE overlap, you actually get more damage out of spell cascade than like something else. But I don't know how that would compare to another thing, like another support gem. But I think one interesting note from this is it kind of promotes more of like a clear speed meta where you use your spell one time and you do enough damage that you can basically just destroy anything. So you like fan out your skill more to like one shot a pack. Uh, so this is this is something I think cool to play around with. Again, mono multiplier 140, but for level four. So you could use this right away and test to see how it works. And I'm sure that the less area of effect and less damage do decrease as it gets higher level to make it more manageable. Ancestral Call support supports uh, single target melee attacks causing them to attack multiple targets simultaneously cannot support minions. Supported skills deal 25% less damage. Supported attack skills also target two nearby enemies. I don't fully understand the use of this. Um, I mean, I guess I can understand this being very low level where like melee splash is not super good at the beginning because you don't have much AoE to scale it. So you use Ancestral Call instead. Or maybe you use Melee Splash and Ancestral Call. But using Melee Splash and Ancestral Call, you could just use like Melee Splash and Multi-Strike. And I think that would be better. So I don't fully understand this this yet. I don't want to like, like, you know, talk bad about it. I think I just really need to use it to understand it. But either way, it does give you essentially multi-target at level 4. Which I think everybody wants to have. You know, like running through crypt and getting enfeebled by a mob and doing you know no damage at least he can do no damage in an area of effect right so i i think this is kind of nice to see and i'm curious to see what these unannounced ones are uh we also have some new uniques here um some a really really strong unique actually in here so first off is the arborix assassin bow uh which gives additional arrows Every 16 seconds, you gain iron reflexes for 8 seconds. 30% more bow damage at close range while you have iron reflexes. 30% increase attack cast and movement speed while you do not have iron reflexes. And then you have far shot while you do not have iron reflexes. So a really interesting bow to use. Um, you could totally just pick up iron reflexes and use this bow and you would get, you know, half the bonuses. I don't think the bow is too strong by itself. But it will scale very well with quality since it's got a 300 top end. Um, I think it's just something fun to play around with though. That 30% increased attack, cast, and movement speed looks pretty nice. Uh, this dagger actually I'm pretty excited for. Uh, this dagger gives you 30% increased global critical strike chance. A huge amount of flat cold. Uh, pretty okay attack speed. Flat evasion, which is not that much, but 300 evasion is still good. 20% chance to dodge attacks while your offhand is empty and 100% increased cold damage while your offhand is empty. So my initial thoughts when I looked at this is like, why on earth would I ever want to have an empty offhand? Because if you just dual wield, you get an attack speed multiplier and you get a physical damage multiplier. But if you're using this dagger, you're probably not playing physical because it's got a huge flat cold roll. Um, I think base block for dual wield is 15% and this gives you 20 dodge. This plus acrobatics gives you what, like 60% dodge alone. So just using that and then using like a jade, or not a jade, a quartz, you're at like 70 dodge already. So this is actually a very strong dagger, at least for starting, because you wear it, you're done with your main hand, and you don't have to worry about an offhand, and then you can prioritize other pieces of your gear until you're ready to upgrade to something else. <coughs> so I have to say, I really do like the design of this weapon. And of course, we don't know the exact roles on these items either. Uh, Yoke of Suffering Onyx Amulet. So this gives, um, it's on an Onyx, which is cool. 
It gives all attributes Fire, Cold, and Lightning Res. Reduced duration of ailments on enemies, which is kind of bad in a way. But not so bad. It's okay. It feels bad. I finished my coffee already. Enemies take 5% increased damage for each type of ailment you have inflicted on them. Your elemental damage can shock, and then you have 10% chance to shock. So this could be used as a support. Basically trying to stack ailments like bleed, poison, ignite, chill. <clears throat> I don't think chill and freeze stack together. Uh, and then you have, what is it, shock? So you can still increase like your whole entire party's damage by like 20%. At least 20-25%. The problem is it doesn't seem very reliable unless it's on like a boss. If it's on like a pure single target, then I think it's okay. But other than that, I don't see too much... I don't really know. I'm not really too sure on this. <clears throat> I mean, even just having though the your elemental damage can shock, I think is good enough as it is. Uh, we've got the Hungry Loop Unset Ring. This is like one of the super hypey items. Um, consumes socketed, socketed support gems when they reach maximum level, can consume three additional support gems, and socketed gems are supported by level 20 cast when damage taken. Now, it has been confirmed that the socketed gems supported by level 20 cast when damage taken is a support gem that has been, like, consumed by the Hungry Loop. So this doesn't actually, like, it actually says can consume four additional support gems with no cast when damage taken. So the, the first thing I thought of is summoners. Summoners are always link-starved, and you usually only have one six link because you have like, I don't know, maybe like some weapon and a shield. Like some people will use a two-hander, but if you're playing like a CI variant, you're probably better off using a one-hander and shield. So this ring can give you like a five link specter or five link zombie, which is, I mean, nobody's going to argue with that. And then you have something open for like auras or vol skills or even mobility skills. Uh, so I really like that design. Playing a trapper, you could put your traps on this, right? Four support gems plus an active trap. You have a five link trap that you just put in a ring. So this is a very nice design. Rolakesh's Impatience Riveted Boots. Uh, they give cold chaos, 20% movement speed, and gain a frenzy endurance or power charge once per second while you are stationary. Lose all frenzy endurance and power charges when you move. So. The biggest thing to see with this is you basically would put them on, your charges would tick up like before a boss fight, and hopefully you can like just swap them off and you wouldn't lose your charges. I don't really see much of a use outside of basically just snapshotting with these, but for snapshotting they seem pretty crazy. Uh, because as long as you take the boots off, it doesn't say you would lose your charges unless they changed it for these. So that's really all I see from these. And then there's the Twilight Temple Moon Temple map. Uh, area is inhabited by, or sorry, area has increased monster variety. Area is inhabited by Lunaris and Solaris fanatics. And then you have flammability and frostbite. So this looks like it's just going to be a tier 9 version of the bosses that you fight back in Act 8, is it, I believe? Solaris and Lunaris. And then there's the new supporter packs. And of course the Abyss Challenge League, which we saw um, in the first video, which was kind of like the little, little like, uh, I don't know, the ground was opening for the Abyss. Uh, Path of Exile War for the Atlas launches on December 8th Pacific Time on PC and shortly after on Xbox One. Alongside the expansion, we're also introducing the Abyss Challenge League. Uh, fight foes that spill forth from the underworld beneath your feet as you journey across Rayclast. Claim valuable new Abyss Jewels. Valuable new Abyss Jewels to customize your characters and items in new ways. We'll post detailed information about how the Abyss Challenge League works next week. So that's pretty much about it. Uh, if you guys are curious for the supporter packs, I'll just kind of hover over them really fast. Uh, there's the Vagabond, the uh, Seeker's Armor Set, the Scholar, which comes with the Scholar Armor Set, the Redeemer, uh, Subjugator, and then I believe we have the Dominator, which has a really cool portal effect. That portal. Anyways, that's pretty much about it for this video. Oh, actually, no, I lied. There was one more thing to talk about. Um, so they actually changed Volpact. Uh, so we can thank RiceQT because I typed in Volpact changes and this is the first thing that popped up. Uh, they changed Volpact and they moved it. 
So Volpact is no longer instant leech. Volpact is now life leech per second is doubled. Maximum life leech rate is doubled. Life regeneration has no effect. So they basically don't want people playing ping pong with their life anymore because they were like, well, I'm sick of it. No more cheese and content, uh, at least with Volpact. So, I mean, shit, we're going to see what happens. I don't know if, like, the old items go legacy or if they just keep this new ball pack now, like with that Ziri's, uh, Ziri's gloves and whatnot. But I guess we'll find out. So let me know what you guys think about ball pack. Personally, I've played, like, only a handful of ball pack builds. I never really liked them. Um, so it doesn't really honestly change anything for me. I just think it's funny seeing, like, all the crazy stuff about it. I kind of just sit in the back. But, I mean, overall, this is a nice meta change. Uh, so many people just play ball pack, so I'm really curious to see what happens with that. Uh, I'm a more, I'm a big fan of like the, the sustain meta with regen. So this is pretty huge. You guys, let me know what you think about it. Um, but yeah, if you guys like the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at Twitch.tv/pox. Also, I switched to a new microphone. Uh, I think this is the uh, was it Blackout Spark, the Spark from Blue Yeti. So.